Good evening and welcome to the second Elections Live Show of the 2021 Loughborough Students Union Exec Elections. It's been a very exciting week so far. We've met the candidates, we've had the soapbox and now it's crunch time. With voting opening tomorrow and only five days left until we finally find out who makes the exec team in 2021. Hello and welcome back to the second live election show. I'm Olivia Tarr and I'm with Beth and Clargo. So we've had an amazing, exciting start to the weekend. We've had the soapbox, the voting opens tomorrow. So make sure you've got that in your calendar. And we're counting down the days now till Friday's results night. So, I mean, what have your highlights been? I mean, definitely the live reveal. We got yes. to meet the candidates for the first <laughs> time, got to see their manifestos and see their social media be launched. But then who could forget the soapbox this weekend? Um, we saw Joshua Gray grilling the candidates for the last time, um, putting them on the spot and letting mm -hmm. them tell us exactly why we should vote for them to be on the elected team. But let's not talk about it. Let's see it and have a look at some highlights. Um, so, hi, I'm Jodie Evans and I'm rerunning to be this year's action chair. My name is Hetty Borden and I am rerunning to be elected as your RAG chair for 2021 to 22. I'm Seth, I'm Royal Society chair this year. Um, please vote for me, Nathan Chan. If you want to vote for me, please do. Thanks very much. Every member of the executive team has a value and has a role. What do you think you're going to achieve that and how and what kind of pathway are you going to create to, to get in that engagement back? Um, I want to challenge my committee next year. Why do you think it is that people no longer want to be on society's committee? So it's not not wanting to be on the society committee, I would say. I think a lot of people, they look at the role and they don't really know what it is. Is it in your manifesto you said that you're the candidate of continuity yes. for RAG and, and not necessarily the candidate for change, but so you're saying that actually RAG does need change and that you're the person who can bring it this year? It needs change, yes. I do have like fine tooth claims through our projects. There are some projects that were set up five, ten years ago and they were absolutely amazing when they were set up. Yeah, actually get back on their feet uh, and get new members. So we've already started to kind of look at this to some extent. Um, so I totally agree with Cameron about collaboration, but what I wanted to do was to work with the welfare and social sex, uh, social chair as well. Some of the qualities you'll benefit from in the role are being flexible and dynamic uh, as you work with students as well as businesses and external stakeholders. So how are you going to manage this fast-paced environment? I think it's about planning things in advance where you can. Oh, that's tricky. Um, more of that, the more of that will do the better. Making sure that we're really getting in there and getting as many events going as we possibly can to get the students going, whoa, this is exciting. I'm just going to skip well, the sections that present the student opportunities. We don't think it's going to be less physical in the future. I chose to run for Enterprise Chair because I'm really passionate about business and helping others and I am fully prepared to set aside my businesses to help. It's exciting being able to run your own company, being the boss of your own company, how exciting is that? Um, but importantly, how will you reach this total next year? So, to be completely honest with you, Josh, my priorities this year have shifted drastically. Well, how do you think that society's voices should be represented within the wider students' union? So that was the soapbox action from all the section heads, candidates. Now, I think they all did a great job, and mm -hmm. we're actually going to speak to the enterprise candidates now. Um, firstly, we're going to speak to Nathan Chan, mm -hmm. who... He was part of Loughborough Net Enterprise Network and he did a year in Enterprise as part of his placement year. So let's see what he's all about and let's firstly hear from his campaign team. Why do you think people should vote for Nathan? <laughs> the guy went on LSU TV and ate a burger in one bite and downed a pint. I think if he's willing to do that, he'll be willing to do anything to make Enterprise work well. You should vote for Nathan because I've never seen anyone try this hard at anything in my entire life. I should vote for Nathan because I truly believe he can help anyone start their businesses. 
So yeah, if he could help me, then he could help anyone. Trust me, even the least experienced. I am on Nathan's campaign team because he helped me uh, grow my own platform during lockdown when I was at a really low point with my art and I would say my business. And through his help, I managed to get commissions and to sell some products on my little shop on Etsy. And I thought that, it, as I said, if he could help me, then he could help anyone. And I truly believe in his cause. Um, well, I met Nathan at the IDEA program, and that's where we started our first business, uh, Jomo, uh, where we did uh, electric skateboards. Um, and, you know, he was, he was great at the business side of that. Uh, so I'm sure as Enterprise Chair, he'll have that entrepreneurial spirit and that can-do attitude that will just be fucking brilliant. <laughs> and hopefully we have him now in the studio. Welcome, Nathan. Thank you for joining us here. Hey, can you see me right now? Yes, we can see you. We can see you. Lovely thank you for coming. To see you guys. Yeah. Yes, even though we've had terrible weather, so thank you for coming down. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, the weather got slightly better, so I, I'm really grateful for that. Actually. <laughs> well, yeah. that is good to hear because yeah, when definitely. we arrived, it was absolutely pouring Chucking down. Chucking it down, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, we just heard from your campaign team. Mm -hmm. What's it been like working with them this year? Um, it's, so we, we did that um, testimonial shot like two days ago and it was so fun to shoot because we also did a kind of like so we did an anti-music video kind of thing mm. and yeah so it's amazing to work with them and uh, they, they made, just made my whole campaigning like so much better yeah <laughs> yes i mean we've both seen that anti-music video and if you haven't watched it it involves a hot tub and a glass of wine i believe so <laughs> definitely check it, it out it was squash it was squash oh, squash squash yeah. well <laughs> he says um now how did you find a soapbox this weekend um i expected a lot of tough questions and i got those tough questions but it was it was slightly better than i expected actually yeah yeah. Good, good. And I must say, we, we watched it and we thought that you raised quite a lot of in, um, interesting points. And um, we were just really intrigued by the Sunday market idea. Would you be able to tell us more about that? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so basically, I, so have you seen the markets in town? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I want something like that, but uh, incorporating students as well. So it would be a mixture of uh, local businesses and students and societies. So students and societies could set up their own stands, um, sell their own uh, national um, items, so like food stands or uh, whatever souvenirs they have from home. Uh, it's just about bringing the community, especially after this year of lockdown, I want everything to be a bit more open and social. Mm. And just, um, I, want, I want enterprise to be not just enterprise as a section, but for everyone. So, yeah. yeah, definitely after lockdown as well. We definitely mm -hmm. need some socialisation mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And, it, and it's yeah. clear from your manifesto that ent your real key point is enterprise is for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, have you thought about, you mentioned collaborations with hall chairs. Um, have you thought about any other collaborations you could do this year? Um, so, I, so I want to do collaboration with businesses, society and welfare. Um, so I, to be fair, I'm very open to any collaboration so um so whether you're a whore, whether you're a whore or a society um you could definitely hit me up and set we could set up something for collaboration for sure yeah that sounds great and now finally um you've got a very exciting business that you set up yourself <laughs> electric skateboards i believe yes how just how did that come about well um so when i was 19 i wanted an electric skateboard but at the time it was really expensive so around like 1200 pounds um that range so i was like there's no way i could afford that so instead i um i bought parts from china and build it but um i have a advantage where i know chinese Mm. Um, and I, I was able to like talk to the suppliers myself, but I know a lot of my friends can't do that. So I just set, set up a shop and mm -hmm. ended up running that for my year in enterprise as well. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so, so much for chatting with us. <laughs> thank you. Um, it's been lovely to speak mm -hmm. to you. And now let's, you know, take a little look at the Enterprise Soapbox highlights. Please vote for me, Nathan Chan. If you want to vote for me, please do. Thank you very much. So 
this is, this is a really vital one in the sense that we want as many students involved um, in the section as possible, making sure that we're really getting in there and getting as many events going as we possibly can to get the students going, whoa, this is exciting. So I totally agree with Cameron about collaboration, but what I wanted to do was to work with the welfare and social, sex, uh, social chair as well, um, get a taste of enterprise and collaboration basically. You run your own business alongside your degree. I chose to run for Enterprise Chair because I'm really passionate about business and helping others and I am fully prepared to set aside my businesses to help. There's all sorts of collaborations that go on between our section and the other sections and I think Enterprise should do the same too and I think we can expand that further. I think more of that, the more of that we do the better. I think that every single section within the union, there is some sort of an entrepreneurial skill to that. It's exciting being able to run your own company, being the boss of your own company, how exciting is that? It's... What I really wanted to bring next year is a lot of in-person activity, granted that restriction eases. The Sunday market and um, having a networking events and brainstorming events. As you say, Nathan, it's been a struggle. We've had coronavirus. I haven't seen as many society collaborations this year. I think we could do more next year. I've also got a question from, from Manny, the current Enterprise Chair. We'll have a video from him later. Uh, but he sent in this question to us beforehand. Uh, he said, some of the qualities you'll benefit from in the role are being flexible and dynamic uh, as you work with students as well as businesses and external stakeholders. So how are you going to manage this fast-paced environment? I think it's about planning things in advance where you can. Being able to innovate and adapt is so key. But do you believe, as candidates, that Enterprise should raise their own money in this way and have a membership system of its own? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't think that we should have a cost-based membership. Enterprise should be free. And now we welcome Cameron Glenwright. He's our second candidate for Enterprise. He's currently the media chair, but now he's taking a spin and he's running for Enterprise this year. Now he's got a background in magic and he also has a freelance magic and photography business, which we'd love to talk about. We've seen his music videos, very interesting. If you haven't seen them already, we'll let you check them out. We won't spoil them, but now let's hear from his little campaign team and see what's going on. Little. Why little? perspectives and ideas he can bring to the role because of his past experience and owning his own businesses and I think he'd be amazing at just encouraging um, personal development and collaboration throughout the whole of the LSU. Hi Cameron, can you hear us? Hello, hello, yes I can. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight. Now we've talked about your magic. Um, yes. Have you got any tricks for us? Oh, that, that would have been a really good idea. No, I've got nothing with me today, but yes, oh, yes, I've been doing prepared. magic since I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, first off, hold on, we, we've, we have to talk about this. It's, it's the elephant in the room. The songs, there, for anyone that doesn't know, there is a full <laughs> cover song just dedicated to your run for Enterprise. How did that come about? I, I just, it's my favourite part of the whole experience of making a song and I got really overly obsessed with it um, and covered it with the lyrics and that sort of thing. But no, I had a really good time doing it. It was really mm. fun. Um, what other aspects have you added? I mean, you're adding a bit of social media in this year as well. Yeah, I mean, tell us yes. a bit about that as well. So it's producing video content. Uh, so I'm currently making one about my manifesto mm -hmm. points. Um, it was obviously things like that music video there. And then it's just lots of different graphics to explain the manifesto, uh, why I'm running uh, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when we were reading kind of your little bio, like what's going on with your campaign, um, you said you're bringing in external contacts, hopefully, for, for Enterprise if you win. Can you describe in detail kind of what's happening with that? Yes, yeah, so the hope uh, is that we do collaborations. Uh, so it's to increase the collaborations within Enterprise. So it's mm -hmm. collaborating with societies, uh, sections and external companies. Uh, the hope is that by collaborating with all these different people that we can bring more skills into Enterprise. Oh, definitely. You know, if we look at the society section, for example, look at how many different skilled people uh, are inside that section. So if we could bring them into Enterprise uh, and collect some ideas from them as well as pass our ideas on to them too, mm. uh, I think that would be really great. I mean, you're an experienced runner. I mean, you've, you've, you've done this once before. I mean, you obviously are a media um, representative now. How has your approach changed, though, obviously, going for such a different role suddenly? I think, I think there's a real crossover between the two roles in the sense that, mm. you know, you've got media, which has kind of a marketing element to it and that sort of thing. So I think the transition um, feels, feels smooth than I might have originally thought. Uh, I, think it, I think it's the excitement of trying to market yourself um, and that sort of thing. And I think... With, since I was younger doing business cards and you know running my own businesses and that sort of thing the the media element and the enterprise element have always kind of came together into one that mm. sort of thing 
Well, I mean, they definitely work well together. I mean, that's definitely a good lead for you there. I mean, for anyone watching this, can you give a reason why they should vote for you? Oh, OK. I think if you look at my, my manifesto, my manifesto is really going to encourage the skills improvement um, within enterprise. The collaboration element as well as the soft skill improvement um, are all going to really improve you as individuals, uh, develop you when it comes to getting employment, um, as well as if you wanted to uh, do your own company. But I'm also quite creative as well. Uh, you know, photography, <laughs> magic, all that sort of thing coming from the media background. Mm -hmm. I think that's a helpful element to have within enterprise. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And um, <laughs> we heard from your campaign team there um, just before we introduced you. How has it been doing the digital campaigning last year? Obviously, you also ran last year where we had the physical campaign and we still had the poster run. Just how have you found that change? I think I think it's it's felt quite normal. I think mm. because because this year, obviously, we've had COVID-19 throughout the entire year. Everything's been digital. It hasn't felt that strange with doing that this year. Um, I think from last year, it's definitely a big difference. You know, last year, this time during the week, we'd be running around going into different canteen <laughs> going halls. absolutely insane, um, yeah, at this point yeah, last year. <laughs> it's definitely completely different. You know, it feels weird because you don't feel like you're doing anything. You're just sat in your room making videos. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's definitely a new element to it. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be checking out your TikTok <laughs> straight after this, guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, um, and best of luck. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, now... We are now, we've seen from the section heads and how that they did in the um, soapbox, but we haven't heard from how the executive officer um, candidates did. So why don't we have a look? Hello and welcome back to the second day of the soapbox debates for the 2021 executive elections. I hope over the next 30 minutes or so you learn more about me and why I'm standing. And I guess moving on to probably the most important that's affecting us all at the moment is the coronavirus. This wasn't on your manifesto at all. Yeah, so I don't think it's worth wasting time in a manifesto. Obviously we have very limited words um, and I think everything that I have mentioned in my manifesto is really important and even more so now we're coming out of COVID. Well, it's the second interview of the afternoon is welfare and diversity. So I don't think that's a drastic change, Josh. I, I think that's something that's been happening already. I mean, it's something I've been pushing for uh, the past year. They're, they don't need to be moved anywhere. I think where they are is a very uh, good place for them to be. Have you considered each section, and each section other than welfare and diversity, and their volunteers and consulted them? Uh, yes. So by way of initial consultation, I've had a conversation with every section chair and their relevant member of staff. How would you work with the university to help solve this problem that you call systemic? Unfortunately, because of a lack of power structures or long-term strategic vision, that the involvement with students can sometimes be tokenistic or performative. There we go. It's the third debate of the afternoon. It's the education debate. My manifesto revolves around inclusivity and representation, where I will ensure every student is heard. experience has really enabled me to get a holistic insight into the education section. Do you think LSU should have taken a different stance regarding tuition fees? And if so, what would it be? I think the stance that we took for, or LSU took for tuition fees, was at this time, I think, retrospectively, there could have been a plan in place that would change allow a reimbursement of some parts of the tuition fees. Well, there we go, we're on to one of the two big ones now, it's Vice President. First of all, I think one of the key, the key um, parts of the Vice President role is obviously by managing the sections. I think it's with the section, with managing the section heads, it's really important to like know about their sections and know what their committees are like and know what the problems are with that. Do you know what DRC does? Do you know what the, the objectives are and, and the points are of DRC? Yes. So if they put out a post or if they put out like an, a an action event where it's like, okay, so what do you want to see changed about the university? Like the happenings of the union, such as like even DRC, like the DRC, like um, agendas or minutes of the meeting, for example, that are meant to be posted online. Um, there's always been a lot of problems with those people don't know if they're going to be posted, the, where they are, like that sort of thing. So I think stuff like that, which could be improved, is quite a simple fix. It's just a matter of like making sure it's done. Well, there we go. It's the big one. It's the presidential debate here at LSU on the soapbox. My manifesto is based around maintaining both old and new traditions as we ease out of the pandemic. Uh, with a new VC come new opportunities, with the introduction of a new vice chancellor at the university, it is very important for us to start off on the right foot. So if you had to get rid of one role, 
what aspects of the role are present to make space for more communication with the student in your role? What would it be and why? I actually wouldn't remove any part of the presidential role. I've looked at what's been advertised, hence why I've gone for the role. And I believe if I removed a part, I am working for the students and for the benefit of them. I wouldn't want to remove anything, I'd want to just make it better. I think uh, representing the students should not be something that I need to prioritise. It should be something that I'm always doing. All of the work that the person needs to be doing should always be aimed at representing the students. What does LSU mean to you? In the years experiencing uh, many of the roles that I have experienced, it has meant something where I could grow as a, as a professional, grow as an individual. I think Loughborough and LSU are home and LSU helps embody Loughborough to become the family it is. So that's all it means to me. It provides opportunities, it provides family. It's, yeah. Well, that's it from the Presidential Soapbox. That's it from the Soapbox this year. And that's it for four years of Soapbox from me. Uh, it's been a pleasure and I'm going to hand down back to Sophie Brocia and Danny Brett. Welcome back. Now, speaking of elections, we also had the local elections recently. We had the local Leicestershire County Council elections. Just to give you a quick rundown while I look down, the Conservative Party won six seats, Labour lost two, uh, the Lib Dems lost four, which means the Conservatives remain in power for now. But uh, right now, let's talk about what's happening tomorrow, the more important elections, which is yes, the LSU, definitely. These are the <laughs> most important elections this year. So tomorrow, we have another episode of Elections Live. This time, we will be talking to Jodie, who is rerunning for Action Chair, and also to Elle and Tom, who are running for Education EO. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be very exciting, get to know them a bit more as well, and see how they felt when they face a soapbox. Um, but of course, talking about all these candidates, there is one more that we always forget to mention, that is Ron. Oh, Re Ron, nominations. my favourite. <laughs> yeah, my so favorite. remember, Ron is always an option. Now, voting tomorrow opens mm -hmm. at 9am. Very important. Definitely. And I know everyone's wondering, just how does it work? Well, let's find out. So, what is STV? STV stands for Single Transferable Vote and is the voting system that the exec elections will be working under. Normally, in elections, you'd vote under a first-past-the-post system for an individual candidate by putting an X by their name. The exec election works on the STV system, so when you log into lsu.co.uk forward slash exec elections, you will be presented with a list of candidates running for each role. You can rank as many or as few candidates as you wish. Under the first-past-the-post system, the candidate with the most votes wins, even if all the other candidates' votes combined are more than 50%. However, under STV, it all starts with a quota. The quota is 50% of the total votes cast plus one. If no candidate reaches the quota in the first round, then the least popular candidate is eliminated and their votes are redistributed based on their voters' second choices. This process will continue until the candidate reaches the quota and is elected. Although remember, RON, which stands for Reopen the Nominations, is also an option. Voting opens on 9am Tuesday, the 11th of May, and be sure to follow LSU Media on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for all our exec elections coverage. Yes, I mean, very important. Make sure that you do vote. Uh, remember, Ron is always an option, but obviously, if you love one of the candidates, definitely lend a vote to over to them. I mean, I, that's the end of the show. I mean, that went so quickly. I know, and it was just so good to talk to the Enterprise candidates. Definitely. Hopefully give you a bit more about them mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just let you know a bit more about what's happening during these elections. Yeah, make sure you tune in tomorrow as well. We have some more interviews lined up for you, so definitely check that out. Yeah, and yeah. don't forget, voting opens tomorrow. So yep. get on the LSU mm -hmm. website and get your votes in. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you.